Good morning. Welcome to Victory Fellowship Church. We are the little church with a big heart. We're doing great big things for God. And every time we touch a soul, what is it? It's a great big thing for God. We want to say Merry Christmas to y'all. We're going to start off with some great Christmas music. God bless you. Y'all may be seated. Come 
big clap offering right now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done for us. And Lord, we do fall face down as your glory shines around. God, we just worship you and bring you glory and honor that you're so due. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Well, thank you, Brittany. Hallelujah. Give her another hand, could you? Amen. And uh, it must have been exciting for Mary to carry the baby Jesus, but that awesome responsibility of what she, of who she carried, you know she prayed to God often, God give me the ability to carry your son. And uh, that's not unlike us as Christians, we we're excited and joyful about the opportunity to be a Christian and live for God, but it's an awesome responsibility that, he's, that he calls us to do, to carry his son. Well, God bless you all. Uh, take your Bibles today, turn to Luke chapter 2. I'm going to go ahead and read Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. I never, ever get tired of reading the Christmas story because every bit of it is true and amen and hallelujah. It really happened. It's not pretend. It's history. It's his story. Amen. History. All right. Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Boy, I tell you what, if they'd known who Jesus was, most of them would have gladly given up their, their room. Yeah. Yeah. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were very afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that this, uh, uh, what we read is true and it happened and you came to earth for each one of us, Lord. You came for the whole world, but you came for each one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, the birth of Jesus was a real day in history. It wasn't mythology. Can you say amen? amen. And it was in Bethlehem, which is a real city. It didn't happen in Narnia and it didn't happen in a galaxy far, far away. It, uh, uh, Bethlehem is a real city six miles from Jerusalem. And the prophet Micah, you know the book of Micah in the Bible, about 700 B.C., he prophesied about Bethlehem, saying, But thou, O Bethlehem, Ephratah, though you be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall he come forth unto me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. That means from everlasting, it means that Jesus has been around forever and ever, even before time existed, from everlasting. Jesus was with the Father, and he was sent to this earth for us. Amen. You might think that Mary and Joseph would have been residents of Bethlehem, but they were not. They were from the city of Nazareth, and they had to go to Bethlehem to pay their taxes because uh, they were of the lineage of David and the, the, the Bethlehem was, was the city of David. Amen. So God arranged for this couple that lived in Nazareth to go where it was foretold to the city of Bethlehem. Read verse 11 with me. It says, For unto you, for unto you, look to your neighbor, 
If you're at home watching this, look to your spouse. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Anyone who's ever sinned needs a Savior. How many have sinned? We all have. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Anyone who's ever sinned needs a Savior. The Bible clearly says we cannot save ourselves by our own good works or anything else that we would do. So unto you, unto us, is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The, word, the Greek word for Christ is anointed one. It means Messiah. Jesus was the fulfillment. Jesus said, I've come not to end the law, but to fulfill the law. He was the fulfillment of everything that the Old Testament pointed to. He would fulfill the hopes and dreams of Israel and so much more. And so much more. In Isaiah chapter 9, which was written at 740 B.C., Micah was 700 years before Christ. Uh, Isaiah was 740 years before Christ. And I'd like you to turn with me in that. It's Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. Again, written 740 years before the birth of Christ. It says this, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Notice his titles, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Yes, Jesus is the Son of God, but he's also God in the flesh. Can you say amen with me today? Yeah. And verse 7 says, Of the increase of his government and peace. Don't miss that peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end, no end. Flip back to Luke chapter 2. I hope you held your place there. I didn't, so it, it, it'll take me a second maybe to get there. But Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Remember the angel proclaims, Unto you is born this day a Savior in the city of David. And there's a reaction from all of heaven, from the heavenly host, which is the army of the living God. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. And this is the main phrase I want you to listen to and remember from today. The, the heavenly host, the army of God says this, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. First and foremost, God is to be glorified. Amen. First and foremost, God is to be glorified. Yes, Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. That means give him the highest praise. And the greatest thing that God has ever done on planet earth is when he made himself a baby and came to earth for us. So glory to God in the highest. We give God the, the glory. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So second... First, give God the glory. Give him glory in the highest for the greatest thing that he ever did for planet Earth. And secondly, peace on Earth. Peace spreads wherever the child is received. Glory ever ascending from man to God. And peace ever descending from God to man. And it's interesting, the NIV reads this. reads this way. And on Earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. So God, God's peace is offered to everyone in the world, but it only rests and comes to those that receive him. Can you say amen? amen? People that reject him will never know the peace that comes from receiving him. And many of us need peace. Boy, at Christmas time especially, it's such a 
hectic time where you're trying to get everything done with Christmas specials and buying everyone gifts and all that. But, but we need peace in various ways. And one thing we have a need for really, especially today, is global peace. Global peace. Um, boy, look at what's going on in America and throughout the world. There seems to be anything but peace. But God one day is going to meet our need for global peace. Did you know that? And we're closer to that than we ever have been. There's something called the millennium that's coming where we, were, we are going to rule and reign with Christ Jesus for a thousand years. His righteousness will be established. The devil won't be there during that thousand years and there'll be a perfect peace. The Bible says that even the lion will lay down with the lamb. There'll be global peace. Can you say amen and give him a clap offering this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a ways off yet. We don't know how far off, but global peace is coming. I just want you to know God has you in mind, and he has this world in mind. So there won't be world peace for a while, but, but it's coming. And I want to talk about three things today. Peace on earth. Peace to those on whom God's favor rests. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. We need peace from God. Amen. At one point, Jesus breathed on the, the disciples his peace, that peace be on to you. Right. And we need to, there's another scripture that says, let the peace of God rule and reign in your heart. Don't go through this Christmas season without finding the peace of God in your soul. And if you have it already, let it go even deeper because God loves you. He's in charge of this world and he's in charge of your life. So I want to talk about three things this morning. One is the peace, having peace with God. The other one is having peace with yourself. And the third is having peace with others. Peace with God. And when I say peace this today... Peace is not simply the absence of conflict and animosity. When I say peace, I'm referring to, to, to the presence of joyful tranquility and as much richness and interpersonal communication as you, can, as you, as you are capable of. Yes, richness and sweetness. I know that we've all had the, the experience of having sweet fellowship with one another in our church family and fellowship with a friend where there's that comfort and that communication and that peace and you just have a great time because there's no stress there. You feel accepted by one another, loved by one another. That's the kind of peace that that I'm referring to, and you can have that with Jesus every day. He is your, you can have peace knowing that he is your best friend. Amen. But the glory to God in the highest is connected to peace. If you make up your mind to put God first and give him all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, yes. then you will experience the peace of God. If you have a heart that loves God and wants to do everything you can for him, Amen. you will experience the peace of God. But there's no peace without being determined to live for him and give him the glory. Can you say amen? amen. So the angels connect the glory of God to the peace of God. A heart bent on God, bent on pleasing God, will always experience peace. Because a heart that wants to please God believes in God. A heart that wants to please God trusts in God. A heart that wants to please God casts all its care and anxiety upon the great shepherd. Yes. Romans chapter 15, verse 13 says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Yes. Another way to say it, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace by believing. It's by believing and putting our confidence in Christ that, that we have such great peace. Peace with God is the, is the foundation for having peace with yourself and peace with other people. 
If you try to bring peace in, by yourself, in yourself, and peace to other people, and you ignore the, the, your relationship with God, and you ignore the peace that you need to have with God, it, it won't be the depth of peace, and it certainly won't be an everlasting peace. Can you say amen? amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 this, Since we have been justified, since we have been justified by faith, Faith is what? Believing and trusting. Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're all sinners and we know it. And even after we've received the Lord, I mean, I, don't, I, I can't answer for every one of you, but even though I do my very best to serve God and to please Him with all my heart every day, every day I fall short. Every day I sin. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I know I've been forgiven much, and I know I will continue to be forgiven much. But in spite of that, God declares you just. He took the penalty for your sin. He declares you just. He, he declares you right. He declares you pure in standing with God. We know we're not those things. We not, are not perfectly pure. Can you say amen? But that's the miracle. God died for us for our sins so that we could roll off all that guilt and shame. Now, the devil will keep trying to bring it back, won't he? You know, if you've lived 65 years on this life like I have, you've got things in your past that you didn't do exactly right. In fact, you did them wrong. Okay? A amen. And the devil will bring those things back to your remembrance. Okay? But you've got to remind the devil that, devil, those things that I did, they're all under the blood of Jesus. I have been forgiven. Not only that, devil, but even moving, moving forward, when I make mistakes, I have an advocate with the Father. And the Bible says that if I ask for forgiveness, he's faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Amen. His righteousness becomes our own. So we don't have to be worried or upset or stressed out wondering if we're good enough for God because it's not by our works. Stop struggling to be good enough for God. Give it to Him. He died to give you peace. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Jesus came to give you peace and to offer you that free gift of peace salvation you will never earn it no matter how hard you work at it just receive it give the lord a clap offering amen amen so in spite of all my sins because i've received jesus because he died on the cross for all my sins past present and future because of that i can call him my friend and he calls me his friend i am friends with jesus Glory to God. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm a friend of Jesus. Amen. I'm a friend of Jesus. I'm a fr and he's your friend. God says you're justified. God says peace. God says peace. Say it with me. God says peace. There's nothing sweeter to, to go to bed on than knowing you're forgiven and you're saved. There's nothing sweeter to wake up with than knowing you're forgiven and you're saved. The devil wants you to be upset Christmas Eve. He doesn't want you to celebrate the peace that God has brought to you and your family. The devil wants you to be upset Christmas Day. He wants you all focused on, did you get that perfect gift? Well, you know what? The perfect gift has already been given, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So that's peace with God. And you got to make peace with yourself. Do you see how foundational? If, if you don't first see that God's forgiven you, how can you ever forgive yourself for your sin? So that peace with God is foundational to everything else. But you got to have peace with yourself. If God forgives you, guess what? You have no right not to forgive yourself. The devil works overtime, at, at, uh, and we're torn up sometimes by guilt and anxieties and instabilities, by bad feelings that, that have no reason to be there. And there's a way that we can take care of this, and many of you have this verse memorized. It's Philippians 4, 6. It says, be anxious for nothing. That means don't worry about anything. Now, let's face it, sometimes... 
we worry about things. How many worry about things sometimes? We all, we all do. But the exhortation goes out, don't worry about anything. And it tells you how to stop worrying. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, but in everything, that means everything. From your ingrown toenail to, the, to the what's going on globally, to your relationships with people, to the thing that the, the devil tried to make you feel guilty about that happened 10 years ago, or it might be something that happened yesterday. And I'm not saying we, we don't need to go sometimes to a person and ask for forgiveness, but my point is, God doesn't want you all anxious and uptight. He wants you to experience the peace of God. And the way you do that is by obeying the word of God in this. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about in anything. But in everything... By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests, every one of them, even the tiniest things, let your requests in everything, let your requests be made known to God. And then, you know what the Bible says? When you do that, when you just cast it all on Him, the Bible says, then the peace of God, which passes understanding, will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So your mind may be telling you that you have every reason to feel guilty or ashamed or upset or uncomfortable. Your, your mind may be telling you that. But the peace of God passes all understanding. Do you get that? The peace of God, knowing Christ is with you, knowing as you cast your care on him, he's taking care of you. The peace of God can dwell in you richly. Can we give the Lord a hand clap again? Amen. Let the peace of God dwell. Dwell. That means don't let it just come and stay there for two minutes and then leave. Don't let it come there for a day and let it go and not have it the next day. But let it dwell in you richly. But you're not going to be able to do that unless you continually pray to God and connect with him and remind yourself that he's your best friend. He is your, your friend. Tell your friend, your friend Jesus, what's going on. Right. He already knows. Some things, we, sometimes we bury sin and shame so deep that we don't even think we can mention it to God in prayer. Well, you're not going to experience that peace until you bring it all to Jesus. And you pour your heart out to God. Say, God, this is the way I'm feeling. I know I shouldn't feel this way. This is what I, where I'm hurting, God. I know I shouldn't feel this way, but I am, Lord. Would you help me? Would you take this, Lord? And he does. Every time. If you, when you get sincere with God and you cast it on him and you mean business with him, he'll roll that burden off of you. He'll take your burdens, and then he'll give you that peace that passes understanding. Glory to God. He's faithful. How many has God done that for? You've cast your care, down, your care on him, and he's giving you peace. Amen. Me too. Me too. And then the Bible says that, and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And that word keep can also be interpreted that the peace of God will not it, the word keep can be interchanged for the word guard. The peace of God will guard your heart, your mind, and your heart. And we need a guard because we're in a spiritual battle. The devil is constantly, how many is the devil constantly trying to steal your peace? Okay? But if you'll cast your care on him, the peace of God which passes understanding will guard or keep but guard is an even more accurate word. Well, guard your heart and mind from the onslaughts of the enemy. See, the, Jesus has given us the weapons of our warfare to protect our mind and our heart from anxiety. Okay? So remember that. Don't fail to pray and cast your care on him. Then the peace of God will guard your mind and your heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It's like we got a lawyer in us. Uh, yeah, sometimes you might call it an overactive conscience or a conscience that's misdirected. And it's a part of us sometimes that just almost relishes in beating ourselves up 
And that's, that's, that's a demonic, fleshly thing. That's the sin nature. And we got to put it aside. Now, Jesus said this. He said, be holy even as your heavenly Father is holy. So, of course, we are to strive to be perfect and holy. But as, until we go to heaven, saints, we're all going to have that sin nature to deal with. Even Paul did. Even Paul said, I see a, a, a sin nature that battles against my spirit. The, he, he, Paul said, that, what I, that which I want to do, that I don't do. And I do those things I don't want to do. And who will deliver me from this? And he ends it by saying, thank God, through Jesus Christ, my Lord, the blood of Jesus has got me covered. He didn't say that word for word, but that's what he meant. I'm confident of it. Amen. 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 Say, I have have the peace of God, God. which passes understanding. understanding. And I will celebrate celebrate this Christmas Christmas. the peace of God God. that has come to earth earth. through Jesus Christ, Christ. our Savior, which is born. In Bethlehem. Bethlehem. All right. The next step is your relationships with others. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 12, verse 18. As much as it lies within you, as much as it's in you, live peaceably with all others. Now, notice it didn't say, I mean, See, that to have a peace in relationship, it's a two-way street. And the Word of God is simply saying, do your part. Do, you can't control that other person. You can't make them restore the relationship with you. You can't make them forgive you, right? But you can do your part. That's why the Bible says, as much as, as, much as it's in you, live peaceably with all others. So first... Make Jesus your friend. Experience the peace of God that comes from knowing he's your friend and he's forgiving you. Second, roll over all your cares on him so you're at peace with yourself. And third, make peace with others as much as lies, as much as that's within you. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32 says this. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor be put away from you with all malice. Be kind one to another, tender and forgiving, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Forgive others as God in Christ has forgiven you. Uh, we can do our part. Amen? Hey, let me say this. We'll have a lot easier time forgiving others if we'll realize just how much we've been forgiven. I watched the, uh, the movie Scrooge uh, a couple of days ago, at least part of it. How many have seen Scrooge this year? <laughs> Amen. And Scrooge, you know, he, he lived a bad life, and then the spirits are sent to him and to show him how bad a life he's, he's lived. And the whole intention is to get him to, to change the way he's living. And do you remember on that Christmas morning, he wakes up and he realizes that He's been forgiven. He, you realize, he realizes he's been given a new lease on life. He realizes that uh, the, the spirits are giving him an extra chance. He's been forgiven so much because he knows how bad he's been. And he says, I feel as light as a feather. And he dances around. Why is that? Because all that guilt and shame has been rolled away. And he's been giving a, a new lease on life. He's been giving a, a new chance. And, he, and they did it all in one night, like the Grinch says. I mean, that the Grinch. (laughs) Scrooge says. All right? And realize how much God's forgiven you. You might say, well, I've never been a dope addict. I've never done this. I've never done that. If you look at everything that you've ever thought, anything you've ever done or thought, in other words, we've all been forgiven so much. And we need to be amazed that Jesus had his beard plucked out. He was slapped. He was beaten. He was eventually put on a cross. He was, they spat in his face. The, 
slapped him and said, prophesy. He, he did all that for each one of us so our sins would be forgiven. Be amazed that God has forgiven you. Jesus said it this way. He said, you know, the publican, he compared the publican to the Pharisee. And the publican just beat his chest. A publican is another word for tax collector. Tax collectors were known for being not nice people, okay? Sinful people. And the tax collector of the Bible, Jesus said, beat his chest and said, Oh God, please forgive me of all my sins. Uh, I know I don't deserve it, but Lord, would you, would you come into my heart? Would you help me? And the Pharisee, he prayed this way. He said, Lord, I thank you that... I have the ability to fast and to pray, and I watch all your commandments, and I thank you that I'm not like this publican over here that's a sinner. And Jesus said, it's the publican or the tax collector that went away justified. And justified brings peace, my dear friend. Being knowing you're forgiven and you've been made right with God brings peace. A Pharisee that's trying to prove how great he is and trying to earn the favor of God will never, ever, ever experience peace of God. Right. And there are modern day Pharisees today. Can you say amen? There's modern day Pharisees. They won't experience the peace of God because they can't earn their salvation. Only God can save you. Only God can forgive you. So be amazed at, your, at what you've been forgiven and then it'll be a lot easier for you yes. to forgive to forgive others. Keep your friendship with Jesus. Roll your anxieties on Him. Guard your heart and mind against fear and anxieties. And then do your best to treat others right. Forgive. Oh, it's so easy. It feels so good to the flesh to say, they did this to me and I'll never forgive them and, and I'll get them back. But it feels good to the flesh, doesn't it? But Jesus said this. He said, forgive. And forgive 70 times 7. One of the disciples said, how much should I forgive? Up to 7 times? Jesus, <laughs> Jesus said 70 times 7. In other words, just keep right on forgiving them. We, we've got to live with people that don't have good attitudes. We've got to live with people sometimes that don't treat us very good. But you see, we have to be, we have to dwell in the peace of God. And we have to be peacemakers. I'm not saying we can't have a good, honest conversation with people at times. But we're to love them and be patient with them and tender with them and forgiving with them. Because we're, we're called to experience God's peace and then be peacemakers in our family, in our homes, and in our church. Man, I feel the peace of God. Talking about the peace of God and recognizing it's there and available brings us the peace of God. Amen. But all starts with Christ. For unto you this day is born a Savior in the city of Bethlehem. Yes. And the heavenly host said, Glory to God in the highest yes. and on earth peace. It's available to everyone. But to experience, you've got to receive Christ. On earth peace. Yes. Goodwill to men. Amen. Amen. Perhaps you've been hearing this message and, and your life has been anything but peaceful. God can give you peace, but you have to receive Christ. You have to receive what he did on the cross of Calvary. I can't give you that peace. Your parents, your brothers and sisters, your friends can't give you that peace. Only Jesus Christ himself can give you that peace of knowing that you're forgiven. And when you receive Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins, and you receive that he loved you and he did that for you, there'll be the sweetest peace that you ever experienced come into your heart. So I'd like, you to, I'd like to give you the opportunity to pray and receive Jesus right now. What better time to receive Jesus than right here at Christmas time, where you can enjoy that he's the reason for the season. So let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, Thank you for coming to earth, Thank you for coming to earth. As, a baby. as a baby and growing up and, growing up. and, suffering, and, and suffering and dying on the cross, on the cross. As, payment as payment for my sins so I could be forgiven, so I could be forgiven. 
Lord, please forgive me. And cleanse me. And help me to live for you. God, I thank you that you've saved me just now. And I've received your forgiveness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Amen. I believe that you're saved. I believe you are. If you're a Christian, remember, dwell in the peace of God. Dwell in the peace of God. Amen. My Facebook friends, I want to thank you for being with us. I want, you, I want to thank you for watching today. But most of all, thank Jesus because he's the peace giver. He's the one. Amen. Stay with us. We've got a few congregational songs we're going to do this morning. Amen. God bless you and Merry Christmas. Go ahead. Yeah. Go to church with a big heart. Many years ago in construction. She had three daughters and a son. And uh, well, she had on with it to come down to the Bible. And she has three daughters and a son in law. came together in prayer for his beloved family and they are healed today they had the covid they're healed today praise god we're thanking him for that and i know many of you have had the same testimony of either a heal a touch of healing from coronavirus or some other sickness or disease god is here today to touch you and heal anything that you need he is here to deliver them you from that so just trust him. As we worship him, we're worshiping that baby that came. But he was so much more than a baby. He was the son of God. And because he lived, because he came and died on this cross right. and delivered us from our sins, we have hope. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's ring the bells. Praise God. Now stand with us as we sing this song. Amen. Because I'm so 